That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This quote, taken from BrainyQuote.com, uh, last updated in January 2015, was stated by Neil Armstrong upon setting foot on the lunar surface for the first time in history. This quote has not only become a common saying in our lives, but has also become a trademark of the Apollo 11 moon landing. The Apollo 11 moon landing was one of the most monumental chapters in America's history. First, we will talk about all the events that led up to the Apollo 11 moon landing. Second, we will talk about the actual takeoff and what happened on the moon. And third, we will talk about all the effects that the Apollo 11 moon landing had on America. There are many uh, fixes that had to be changed and before the occurrence of the shuttle launch. The previous Apollo missions were very influential to the success of Apollo 11's moon landing. In 1961, the Apollo program took flight. The financial support came from the Kennedy administration and rivaled only the Panama Canal as the largest technological endeavor ever undertaken by the United States government. This was taken from news.discovery.com, published by Robert Lamb on October 6, 2010. This was imperative and was a direct outgrowth of its projects. Projects Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo were all designed to send shuttles into space. The first to launch into space was the Apollo 1, but it was a horrific failure. Shortly into takeoff, the shuttle erupted into flames and the crew was torched in just 17 seconds. This led to a much more cautious approach on space shuttle launches because, it, because a miscalculation meant the astronauts' lives. But scientists overcame this difficulty and realized that the Apollo 1 was not a failure, but just another stepping stone that helped move the Apollo program forward. What made the three astronauts acceptable to be chosen for Apollo 11? Uh, there's three astronauts that were originally chosen for Apollo 11. The first one was Buzz, or commonly known as Eugene Aldrin. He was chosen because he was on Gemini 12, a spaceship that went into space a couple years prior to Apollo 11. He also, uh, what helped build his resume was he had two and a half hours out of the spaceship in space. This was very influential considering they wanted to go to the moon and they were gonna have to be doing stuff outside of the spaceship. Uh, the next one was Michael Collins. He was more of the pilot of Apollo 11, but uh, he also had a prior mission to space and was outside the uh, spacecraft for an hour and a half, so not quite as much as Buzz Aldrin. And uh, the last astronaut chosen was Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was, is probably the most famous astronaut in Apollo 11. He was originally chosen because, like the other two astronauts, he was on a prior mission. But uh, what really made Neil Armstrong um, significant to this mission was he had to dock a spaceship before um, in his past mission, which is pretty essential considering they had to dock somewhere on the moon. When JFK was first uh, elected president, uh, landing on the moon in space shuttle wasn't always his first priority, but as the Cold War um, expanded and um, Russia threatened to be a great, uh, greater superpower than the United States, JFK really took um, the space mission more into account. He ended up expanding the NASA program, and what that did was, it, I mean, it obviously helped as its research to go into space, but it really gave the country confidence. The American um, community, obviously when you have a superpower like Russia, and you know, they have Sputnik flying, you know, they were afraid, and it just gave them confidence knowing that their president was doing something to help them and doing something to put them maybe even ahead of Russia. According to NASA.gov in January of 2015, one of the first pre uh, propositions that President Kennedy was um, had was $20 billion for a space shuttle. Now, he agreed at the time with the government that that was just too much money to spend, even on a big project like NASA. But after talking everything out, uh, they agreed um, to start the uh, NASA program, which started on May 25th of 1961. Also, kind of before that, NASA had a lot of uh, criticism and doubt as people were really wondering, are they the right people for the job? Obviously, this is a big job to get people not only into space, but walking on the moon. That's never been done before. Because um, you have to guarantee everyone's safety on um, the launch, uh, coming back to the Earth, and the launch from the space. So they were kind of questioned, too, if they were the right uh, men for the job, and uh, they were. Around this time, the United States of America and the Soviet Union were in a conflict called the Cold War. Uh, as stated by LPI.edu, copyright 2015, neither side actually fought each other head-on, 
but instead they competed for the support and the respect of the rest of the world. Both countries were superpowers at the time, and they were both very power hungry. Neither could coexist with the other, so they sought to outperform each other in the eyes of the rest of the world. Uh, as reported by hg.nasa.gov, uh, published in June 2014, they, one way that they tried to outperform each other was through their government systems. The United States of America was in support of a democracy, and the Soviet Union was in support of a communist government. Another way that they tried to outperform each other was through military dominance. Um, and they did this by getting involved in foreign affairs around the world. Uh, some, of, some examples of these foreign affairs that they got involved in were the Cuban Missile Crisis and in the Vietnam War. And through involvement in these foreign affairs, they were also able to spread their uh, government systems. Like in the Vietnam War, the part that the Soviets got involved in, they were able to convert it to a communism government. And uh, the part that the United States got involved in, they were able to convert it into a democracy. Um, and although these are very significant chapters of the Cold War history, uh, none could hold a candle to the significance of the space race. The thing is that the Soviets were the first to win the beginning of the, of the race to space with America because they were the first to send a man into orbit around Earth. America needed something to boost their spirits, and landing a man on the moon would show the world what they were capable of. So they teamed up with the National Aerospace and National Aeronautics and Space Administration, more commonly known as NASA, and would go on to increase, uh, to further the Apollo programs. In the late 1950s, NASA started the Project Management Program. Uh, in this program, they basically focus on three main points, the cost, the schedule, and the reliability. <coughs> Uh, there are many people working on this, and they're mostly consisted of engineers and scientists. The engineers mainly focused on building the technology that was used in the ship and all the hardware that they're going to use on the mission. While the scientists purely worked on research and experiments that they're going to do on the moon to figure out more about it. They often uh, argued on who was more important and uh, who needed more space on the spaceship. But in the end, they came together and they made the mission a success. And that was according to history.nasa.gov, last updated on July 16, 2009. Now that we have talked about the pre-launch information, we will now move on to what happened on the mission. According to Apollo.com, last updated in January 2015, on July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 shuttle left the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. With over 1 million people watching from not only America, but worldwide, as obviously this was a big takeoff, if this was successful, this was going to be the first successful mission uh, for men to land on the moon. So, I mean, if you were there, it was obviously a, it would be a pretty big deal. Once the space shuttle was actually up in the air, it took, it took just 12 minutes for it to get into orbit. And once in orbit, it took only four days for it to finally land on. The Apollo 11 entered the moon's orbit for 24 hours in order to test its lunar communication modules. We can refer to this beautiful, this beautiful visual aid uh, brought to you by flightglobal.com, uh, copyright July 2014. You can see that right here is when it entered the moon's gravitational field and it orbited for all of this distance in order to test its lunar communication modules. Um, as stated by history.nasa.gov, uh, last or published in June 2014, this was easily one of the most important steps of the entire mission. The Apollo 11 mission was given an, a green light, uh, even though it had tons of bugs in it. And a lot of these bugs resided in the lunar communication module boards, or communication boards. Uh, after painstaking process, they finally gave it the okay, and the lunar module right here separated from the Columbia, which is the big spaceship, and began its descent down to the lunar surface. And you can see that it kind of veered away from this dotted line, which is the uh, moon's gravity. So it began its descent right there. Uh, Michael Collins, though, was the only astronaut who did not descend down and touch the lunar surface. Uh, he instead stayed on the Columbia, which again is the big spaceship, um, in order to make sure that the communication boards were still functioning properly while the astronauts were down there. Because, like I said, there are tons of bugs, and they didn't want to risk being stranded on the moon. Um, as stated by uh, OverviewInstitute.org, uh, published in May 2012, 
the astronauts planned on using the moon's gravitational force in order to kind of whiplash themselves onto the moon. And that's kind of indicated here by the trajectory. Because uh, they were basically free falling, which is, you know, gravity. Uh, they did this in order to conserve fuel. Uh, as a lot of you know, gravity works downwards. So they wouldn't have to use nearly as much fuel just going straight down than they would having to go up. And that's going to be pretty fuel intensive. Because if you look at the diagram again, this is basically just a straight shoot up. And that's going to be really fuel intensive, even though the gravity on the moon is weaker. Uh, during the descent down to the moon, they did encounter one problem, however. Their landing zone right here, this is the Sea of Tranquility, and what they did not expect was that on the spot that they wanted to land, there was a massive crater about the size of a football field, and it was just littered with massive boulders that would have been very hazardous and detrimental to the mission had they have landed in it. So Neil Armstrong took the lunar module off autopilot and manually veered it off its trajectory and landed it next to the the Sea of Tranquility, in order to uh, steer his crew away from harm's way. Uh, shortly after touchdown on the lunar surface, Neil radioed Mission Control in the United States of America, telling them that, uh, telling them that they had touchdown. Mission Control erupted in celebration. Once they originally got to the moon, uh, Neil Armstrong was the first one to go onto the moon. He uh, was fortunate enough to have a television camera so everyone could witness his first couple steps onto the moon. But after that, they had a mission to do, so they disconnected from the television camera and had uh, this other scientific camera. What he did there was he took pictures of the moon's surface and the surroundings of the moon, and he found out that the moon's surface was like a light gray white. The color kind of varied depending on if it was in the shade or if it was in the sun. Um, another important part of being on the moon was they wanted to get some facts about the sun, and they realized that the temperature really varied on the moon. It was uh, as hot as 180 degrees Fahrenheit when in the sun, and as cold as negative 160 degrees Fahrenheit when out of the sun. Uh, before they left the moon, Neil Armstrong put the American flag on the moon. or this, The significance of this was to establish that we were the first ones to be on the moon. And this is according to history.nasa.org, updated on June 20th, 2014. During the test runs on Earth, their lunar module failed multiple times, but they still gave the mission a green light because they were in such a rush to be the first people to land on the moon. Um, basically, the lunar module is, as we explained before, is a small little shuttle that comes from the big spaceship down to the surface of the Earth and back. And there are two engines on it. There's the ascent engine and the descent engine. The descent engine is the one that they use to go down to the surface of the Earth, or not the Earth, the Moon. And the ascent engine is the one that brings them back up. So if either one of them would have failed, it could have been catastrophic to the whole mission. Um, another thing is that before their descent down to the Moon, Aldrin noticed that a circuit breaker on the ascent engine was broken off and it was not working. So he had to find something to fix it. And what he found was that he used a pen and somehow jammed the circuit breaker back on to the ascent engine, and it worked. Uh, if it wouldn't have worked, they and he wouldn't have found out until they were on the surface of the moon, they may would have been stranded there, and then the mission would have been a total bust. Also, while they were descending onto the moon's surface, when they landed, they only had six seconds left of fuel. If they would have ran out of fuel while they were descending, they could have went off their trajectory point and went to hazardous uh, land and crashed and maybe died. And it, that would have been bad. And that was according to hq.nasa.gov, last update on August 22nd, 2014. Now after uh, the Apollo 11 space shuttle received all of its information that it needed on the moon, it was finally ready to leave. Um, what it did was it took four hours, and obviously, as you know, the lunar module, it, that was not the way they were getting back to Earth. They had to get back to the Columbia uh, to where their captain was on their ship. So it took them uh, precisely four hours to get back to the Columbia, and that was the first time on the whole mission that they were reunited, um, all three of them and the crew. Uh, according to space.com, last updated in July of 2014, um, they wanted to lighten the load as they were headed to the Columbia, so they actually left uh, items behind. They actually left cameras backpacks, um, even some boots, and they obviously left, uh, as you know, the American flag. 
They left the moon at 1.54, and eight days, three hours, and 18 minutes later, they arrived safely back. And then finally, on July 24, 1969, the Apollo 11, or what was left of the Apollo 11, splashed down the Pacific Ocean approximately 1,000 miles south of Hawaii. Now that we talked about the lasting effects that was on the mission, Let's spur the achievements. Let's get to the lasting effects that happened when these astronauts were doing that. There are many decisions that they had to make while they were on the mission. Uh, they did not have the technology like they do have, uh, that they have now. Uh, back then, they basically had to think on their feet, be very quick with their actions, and make sure that they did it right the first time. There was no room for error. Um, if they did have any error, the whole mission could have been a bust, and it would not have been good. But despite their difficulty on the mission, they overcame it, and it was a great accomplishment. The success of the Apollo 11 moon landing had a very great influence on future space missions. As stated by LPI.edu, copyright 2015, Apollo 11 was not the last of the Apollo missions. In fact, there are five other Apollo missions that were successful, and 12 men have stepped foot on the moon since then. The Apollo 11 moon landing had expanded mankind's horizon beyond imagination. Many of you guys may be wondering what happened to these astronauts after the uh, Apollo 11 space mission. Well, Neil Armstrong um, retired from NASA in 1970. He then went on to become a professor until 1980. After that, he retired, and he is currently dead. He died in 2012. Uh, Michael Collins uh, went into the Air Force for a couple years. Uh, he retired from the Air Force in 1972. After that, he retired, and he has three kids right now, so he's really just enjoying his family time and whatnot. And uh, the last one is Buzz Aldrin. He uh, retired right away and just really wanted to relax after the space mission, but uh, he can currently, or he was currently on Dancing with the Stars, but he didn't do very well because he was older and he was eliminated from the show very quickly. He also is famous for saying that he predicts America will be on Mars um, before 2031. Oh, this is according to space.com, published July 2014. According to news.nationalgeographic.com, published by Ann Menard on July 15, 2009, the success of the moon landing accomplished many of the political goals of the United States government. When the word was passed to NASA that the astronauts returned safely to Earth, an announcement went on the big screen at NASA that said, task accomplished referencing the Kennedy announcement made eight years prior, and no understanding couldn't have been signified in a better way. <clears throat> Today we have learned about everything that led up to the Apollo 11 space mission, everything that happened during the space mission, um, as everything that happened on the moon and actually the ship on its way up to the moon, and all the effects that the, fir that that the Apollo 11 mission had on America after its safe landing. The Apollo 11 moon landing was very monumental to America's history today. But we cannot regard the Apollo 11 uh, moon landing as our greatest accomplishment. We must look forward to the future and ask ourselves, what is the future of mankind?